All right, we're about to surprise Kayla with a brand new little baby golden retriever here. We got her from Jeremy's Breeder. We're not 100% we're not sure what we're gonna name her, but she's real cute. What? Guess who's back? Are we just watching her? No, we're keeping her. <laughs> Wait, stop. She's we're for keeps. Her. Who is this? This is Prim. <laughs> She's no way. Oh my god. Oh. Oh You're my freaking god. out. You're crying. I, I, I put her down. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my god. Thank yeah. you. You got a little freaked out. I'm sorry. Hi. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fallen YouTube channel. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> Amazing. So talented. You did it! What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Cletus McFarland YouTube channel. Today we are going cruising. We gotta go pick up White Buffalo at the new shop. You got the V out here chilling with the C7. The C7 is banished to out in the driveway right now because Leroy's parked inside. All the merch is over there, so once the merch is finally out and in the new shop, then we can have both cars in the garage, but for now, she chills outside. You're coming with me. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> Crap. I totally just remembered that my car is out of methanol. Son of a biscuit. I'm back in the driveway. We need to fill up the methanol tank. Easy enough. For those of you who are new here, this is my C7. It has an F1A Pro Charger on it. Makes all sorts of bald eagles, and it really needs a lot of methanol, so we definitely have to keep that filled. Now kids, I don't normally recommend that you run meth, but if you want to cool those intake charges, methanol is your fuel. It's kind of hard to eyeball when to stop with this, because it usually just comes flying out the top. You can kind of hear it when it fills up. Oh. Oh, I nailed it. So now that's full of methanol, and when I get over three pounds of boost, it kicks the methanol into the intake. At least now I can give you guys a fire up angle. Oh yeah, don't worry, most of the lights go off. Hell yeah, brother, let's head to the shop. This car makes the sweetest sounds, just listen. The best is coming to a stop and listening to the idle. Oh my gosh. It whines so good. Oh, I love it. Especially too, if you can get the blow off valve to kind of blow off. I did want to give a big thank you to everyone who ordered your Hell Yeah Brother shirts in the pre-order. At this point, we have inventory for all of the orders and they all ship out Monday. The best part about my drive to the shop is that it's actually over a big bridge here in Tampa called the Gandhi. Basically, it's the longest stretch of flat concrete around. And let me tell you, you can let it rip tater chip. I actually am gonna put the camera on the dash. I wanna do a little experiment and see what the instant fuel economy goes down to when I'm at wide open throttle. I'm guessing it's probably like two or three miles to the gallon, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. Crazy that this car already has 23,000 miles on it. When I started the channel a year ago, I think it had like 13,000 miles, but I drive this thing every single day for school or work and put a lot of miles on it. Shop. I'm getting I'm gonna get arrested before we get there, but <laughs> should we do a little street launch? Let's do a little street launch. <laughs> so rowdy dude. Did you hear it rev after I let off though? That's because of that rev match feature. If you leave it on kind of annoying basically if you didn't know these cars have an auto rev matching feature whereas if you're rolling down the street say at 40 miles an hour clutch in and you put it into your desired gear it'll put the rpms right where they need to be for that certain speed and gear and then when you let the clutch out the car has kind of a smoother transition it's kind of for like old guys who don't like to heel toe you know downshifting on your own or if you're on the track or autocross it makes uh downshifting a lot easier i don't really use it all that much because it kind of annoys me but uh it's kind of a cool feature for sure. That's actually what the paddle shifters do is they turn it on and off. I can actually kind of show you. So like right now it's off. If I pull it into second gear, it still falls to idle. But if I turn it on by hitting the paddle shifter once, now if I pull it into second gear, it raises the RPMs on its own. It's kind of cool, kind of cool. But we're almost to the shop, so let's let it rip here. All right, so guys, check this out. The shop is a freaking war zone right now. Everything is kind of torn apart a little bit right now. I mean, we just have a lot of stuff to do. I think the shop will actually be like open and running and we're actually gonna be working here in under like two or three weeks, so. As you can see, we stripped the ground 
We had that other coating in here, but it's completely stripped now. The rest of the process is acid etching and then filling in the cracks and then coating the floor. We're probably gonna hire someone to do that. We did get it stripped ourselves, but it's probably better to have a professional install it. And in other news, we got our bend pack lifts delivered and they are freaking so nice. I wish I could open them to show you, but they literally just look like a bunch of freaking bars for now. We've got a two post lift going here that's gonna be heavy duty for the diesel trucks. And then we've got another two post lift here and another one over there. And then we also got a bend pack four post lift that's gonna go right here in front of the dyno and it actually lifts the cars up and then they back onto the dyno. But one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about today was the C7 Bald Eagle machine. I've had this car for about three years now and it's been freaking amazing to me. It's been making like 850 wheel horsepower for the last year on a stock bottom end with that F1A Pro Charger setup. It's a freaking sick setup. It's super, super reliable. I drive the car every freaking day and it's so fast for what it is. But I'm at kind of a weird point where I have to decide if I wanna sell the car now while its value is still pretty high before the new Corvettes come out or do I keep it, keep driving it, keep driving it, wait for the new Corvettes to come out and then sell it. It's like, I could probably get a little bit more money now, but again, it's like, do I wanna be out of this car that I spent so much time and money to perfect and then get a car I'm not happy with, it's it's really kind of a tough spot. I definitely wanna buy one of the mid-engine cars or whatever the C8 ends up being, but it might be worth waiting and actually seeing the C8 before I drop the ball and freaking get rid of this amazing car that I've loved and has helped me grow this channel. This car is a super, super simple setup and it's just freaking awesome. Pretty much dead hooks on any surface. It looks great. It's just so simple. I literally haven't had to do any maintenance on it in a freaking long time besides when we upgraded from the stock class to the monster triple disc and under the hood it just looks so good i mean that f1a pro charger the pro charger intake it's got a nitrous outlet plate on it freaking it's just a beast guys it's an absolute beast so drop a comment below let me know what you think if i should ditch the c7 if it's the right time you know with the new corvettes coming i know they're like a year out but really got to start thinking about if i should get rid of it now before it's too late and I kind of lose some value in it. Anyways though, the C7 is going to be sitting at the shop for the day. I'm going to be taking White Buffalo to go pick up some of the inventory for the Hell Yeah Brother shirts. We got to fill just a couple more orders this week. We're picking up like six or 700 shirts. We're going to pack all the orders and have them ready so they can go out immediately Monday morning and then it's like three or four days of shipping. So hopefully you guys will all have them next week. Pretty excited. Those shirts turned out so good. Alrighty C7, I'll see you tonight. All right, so Buffalo is sitting back here behind the shop. We got the Crown Vic sitting there with a blown tire from Cletus and Cars burnout contest. We do have a video from Cletus and Cars demo drags coming soon. And old Buffers is sitting back here. We already unloaded the trailer at the house, so I don't gotta do that today, that's good. I basically just gotta unhook the trailer and she's coming with me. The truck is actually not that dirty, even though we just drove to Dallas and back. Wow, that's amazing. It's amazing what a little bit of wax will do. <laughs> Come on. Folks, do yourself a favor. Even when you leave your trailer somewhere, even behind gates, buy yourself one of these, as well as a lock for the uh, ball lock. And even invest in maybe a GPS unit for your trailer. I can track my trailer anywhere from my phone. I mean, if your trailer gets stolen and your car's in it, there's not really all that much the cops can do, but if you can tell them where it's at, that would definitely help. Lock this baby up. Oh yeah. And chaining up the wheels is definitely a big help too. Pretty hard to go somewhere if all the wheels are locked. All right, Buffalo, glad to be back with you. All right, I'll probably cut today's video off right there. Just a quick little vlog, you know, heading to the shop and uh, gotta tear it up in the C7. Don't forget to drop your opinions below on whether or not I should keep or sell that thing, who knows. But thanks for watching Do It For Dale and we will see you later. Well, dang, hope you enjoyed your time on the Cletus McFarlane YouTube channel. Check out some of our t-shirts. We've got the Do It For Dale t-shirt, the Do It For America t-shirt, and of course the Twin Turbskies t-shirt, all of which can be found in the link in the description below. If you liked what you saw, please subscribe and check out this video that we posted earlier this week.